Welcome to another episode of Metal Mastermind. Jason here today, and I'm going to show you guys how you can dial in a good or at least a decent and usable guitar tone using just about any amp sim. There are two challenges that us guitar players have. Well, we have far more than just two. But anyway, when it comes to amp sims, there's two points I wanna make that we all kinda of struggle with a little bit. One is there's so many amp simulators out there available right at our fingertips. And let me ask you, how many times have you gotten the perfect amp sim and you've dialed in a tone that you're okay with, but then tomorrow or next week, a new amp sim comes out and you're like, oh, I don't like this one anymore. I need this one over here. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two, along the same line here, is we tend to get very frustrated trying to dial in a usable tone with an amp simulator. Now, sometimes we can get that tone to sound good in our studio here, but then when we start trying to put it in the full mix, it's like, eh, something's not quite right. There's weird frequencies and something is just missing. So I'm gonna give you some tips and some settings that I'm gonna share with you today on how you can dial in a usable tone using just about any amp simulator. Now we're gonna do a little experiment here. So this is gonna be fun, all right? I'm gonna use three different amp simulators and I'm gonna let you hear what each one sounds like by itself and then also in the full mix because that's where it really counts. The kicker here is I'm gonna use the exact same settings on all three amp sims. So I'm gonna share those settings with you at the end of the video, so make sure you hang around for that, okay? I'll share the actual amp sims I'm using and the settings and all that good stuff. But first, let's dive right into the tones. Now this first amp sim I want you to hear, this is considered one of the premium amp sims. I mean, their name is out there. And again, I'll share all these details at the end of the video, so let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> This second amp sim is actually free. I mean, you can go to the website and download it. We'll actually provide that to you in the description of this video. But yeah, you can just go there, download it, boom, it is free. So here's what that one sounds like with, again, the same settings. <laughs> Now this third amp sim I'm about to share with you, and again, we're using the same exact settings which I'm gonna share at the end of the video. I'll give you the screenshots for that and talk more about that. Uh, but this is actually from one of the bigger brands of amp simulators, and they've got some pretty good tones and plugins and such. Uh, but the kicker here is this is a very much an outdated version of this amp sim. <laughs> Now here's where the real fun starts. I want you guys to hear what this sounds like. Well, all three amp sims, I want you to hear all of them in the full mix. And of course, after that, I'm gonna share the settings, I'm gonna share which amp sims I'm using for this, and I'm gonna give you some more tips on how to start when it comes to dialing in those tones using amp sims.
right now let's dig into the settings here and I'm just going to share one set of settings because again I use the same exact settings across all three amp sims here while each amp probably sounded a little bit differently they still gave you a pretty decent and usable metal tone. So we'll start with the gain first. And I think this is probably the most important aspect of just metal guitar in general, whether you're playing with a live tube amp, miking up a live tube amp with a Shure SM57, or you're playing through an amp sim. The thing is your gain always needs to start between light five and six. A lot of people like to crank it all the way up. The problem is, is that's gonna give you a very muddy sound in the mix. That may sound okay in your bedroom, in your studio or whatever, but when you start throwing the stuff in the full mix, it's just gonna sound muddy and kind of crappy. So I would say start at about six. If you need to bump it up a little bit from there, hey, that's fine. You may even find some circumstances where you actually have to back the gain off a little bit for it to sound better. Now let's talk about the low end. Now here's the thing that a lot of guitar players, especially new guitar players, just don't quite grasp. They wanna hear that low end when they're playing through amp sims, cause again, they're usually playing by themselves in their studio or in their bedroom, and they want that junk, 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 that chunky sound. Here's the problem with low end on your guitar in the full mix. You start competing with the bass guitar and the kick drum. So if you have too much bass in your guitar sound, then that's gonna clash and it's gonna make for a muddy mix. And that's not something you want. You want your low end frequencies to come from the places they're supposed to come from. And that's not necessarily your guitar. That's gonna be again from your bass guitar and your kick drum in the full mix. So for bass, I like to start rolling mine back to about 4.5 there. Now, you can adjust from there. Sometimes it will depend on the amp sim or the amp you're using, whatever. But that's just a really good starting point, about 4.5. You're just cutting it just a little bit to start out with when you're recording for the full mix. Now mids, this is something that becomes kind of subjective. A lot of the old school thrash metal players and death metal players like to cut those mids a little bit. And in some of the more modern players, especially if you're playing with lower uh, lower notes and seven and eight string guitars, like to boost those mids some because that just gives you a little bit better sound for that specific style. Here's my suggestion. If you're playing for more of the thrashy metal style and you want that, you know, that mid cut, just cut it to about four. If you're playing more of the modern metal styles and you want that mid boost, start at six. And what I'm basically saying here is don't try anything extreme at first. So anywhere between four and six, you know, depending again on your style, if you start at those points, then that's going to give you a very good template to begin your journey into the recording of your tracks with the full mix. You can always go back, and this is the beauty of amp sims, you can always go back and adjust those levels later if you need to. But start out with either four or six or somewhere in between. That's a good starting point because if you start too extreme, then you might have trouble with your other EQ frequencies and trying to balance everything out. It just makes it a little bit more difficult later. Now treble, I personally like to boost my treble between six and seven. That's just my preference for guitar. It helps it cut through the mix a little bit better, but I would just say start at right at six or 6.5, somewhere in that range. And again, later you might want to go back and add a little more treble, or you might want to cut it down depending on like the mic you're using in your amp simulator. Cause you know, we've got the cabinets and the mics and all that stuff. So just start there. I'd say start at 6.5 and then you can easily adjust from there. Now presence, this is kind of like mids is something that's somewhat subjective. Um, I find that depending on what amp sim I'm using, I'll either have to cut the presence just a little or boost it just a little. Again, it just depends on the amp sim. Normally, if it's like a Marshall amp sim, I find myself having to boost it a little. If it's something like a Mesa or EVH or PV, I might have to cut it a little bit. It just depends on the sim, but I'm gonna give you the same rule I gave you for mids. Start between four and six and just play around that area. You may even wanna leave it right up the middle at five there to start with. Because remember, once you hear it in the mix, you can always go back and adjust it a little later. That's the beauty again of using amp sims. Now we can get into the cabin mic settings as well because that's a huge part of your tone, especially using amp sims because you have so many options. One of the things I've found is, yeah, it's good to play around with different cabs, matching, mixing and matching different cabs and amps together. 
but I kind of like to start with whatever cab is by default attached to that amp. So in other words, if you're using a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier SIM, I suggest starting out with that Mesa cab that, you know, that that product matches with it by default. Start there. And for me, I always start with just the virtual SM57 mic. I mean, it works in real life quite well. And actually, most of the amp sims out there, they have a really good SM57 sound. I mean, I don't know. That's just the mic that I gravitate towards, whether I'm recording with a tube amp or with amp sims like we're talking about now. Play around with different ones, but... What I would really try to do is to kind of mimic what you would normally do in a real live scenario if you're recording a tube amp. You know, try it with that SM57 mic, kind of close to the grill, a little off to the side of the cone so you're not getting that real harsh tinny sound, but it's not too like off and boomy as well. Just giving that really nice dark and chunky tone there. So try that out and of course try other mics as well. But again, I'm just wanting to give you a starting point so you can have a decent and usable tone right now and you can always go back and adjust things later on. So what amp sims did we use here? All right, so that first amp sim you heard, uh, that was actually the Bias Amp 2 from Positive Grid. And I was using their, I think it's what their EVH, I've got the screenshot up here so you can see it. I think this modeled after the EVH5153 amp. That's one of the, uh, what I feel, feel is one of the better sounding amps in that package there. Amp sim number two, now this is the free amp sim that's from Fluff, and he's like one of the famous YouTubers, you know, Riffs, Beards, and Gear. So this is his free amp sim here, and I don't know if it's modeled after a particular amp. I'm wanting to say it is like a PV5150 or maybe even the EVH5153. And you can see the screenshot up there as well. So that was amp sim number two. Amp sim number three is from Amplitube, and this is actually their Mesa dual rectifier amp that they had, and I think uh, Mesa allowed them to use uh, their license name for this particular sim and I thought that was kind of cool because it's like okay it's you know it's really Mesa saying here's our amp <laughs> but this is actually an older version of Amplitude I'm not really even sure what version is out there now four maybe five or whatever at the time of this video but this is version three so this is an outdated version I'm sure they've made some enhancements since but I kind of wanted to throw that in just to share that you don't always have to have the latest and greatest of everything to make good music. Now, two points I want to make with this entire video here as we wrap things up. Number one is you'll probably notice the EQ settings I gave you and just everything that I gave you there is really starting out at a very subtle and simple point. You know, it's not starting out with any crazy EQs, treble all the way up or mids all the way down or whatever. It's nothing crazy. It's just kind of starting out sort of in a really nice middle ground there so you can really see what that true amp sim is supposed to sound like. Again, you can always go back and tweak things later. The problem with crazy EQs when you start getting really crazy is when you turn a knob one way, well, it impacts the other frequencies and how everything else sounds. So if you've got crazy settings, it's kind of more difficult to dial something in. It's almost like putting guitar strings on a Floyd Rose when you've taken all the strings off. It's just everything is out of whack when you do that. And that's just a different story altogether. Perhaps we'll cover that on Metal Mastermind one day as well. But just start out with some very simple settings that I gave you here. I'll actually leave those settings in the YouTube description. We'll type them up for you so that you can see them right there. The second thing is, Honestly, it almost doesn't really matter what amp sim you're using these days. Just get your song recorded. Like all these amp sims at this point in time, I mean, and I'm sure they're going to advance even more, but at this point in time, like every reputable amp sim out there is, man, is solid. They all sound pretty good. And again, I'm sure the next best thing will come out next week or next month or whatever. But it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go chasing that new thing all the time. Work with what you have and focus more on your song writing, not trying to kill yourself eight hours a day like a full-time job, trying to dial in the perfect home, which is not going to be perfect tomorrow because you're going to be on the search again. We all know how that goes. Anyway, so guys, I hope this helped you. I want you to remember, if you don't know this already and maybe you don't have this yet, Metal Mastermind is offering a free 
home studio guide it's called the ultimate home studio guide so grab your copy of that there's a link in the description of this video here so definitely get that um, Ken and I Ken Gadellis he's a pro audio engineer we are both the founders of metal mastermind and we go live about every other week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and ding that little bell so you'll get those updates when we do go live Guys, give this video a like. Thank you for watching, and please let us know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll see you on the next show. Until then, horns up.